All right, Patrick, the next topic, let's talk about how Canada's housing could actually become the economic drag, which is kind of fascinating and interesting because that's the very part of the economy that's been the boom and that's been helping Canada's economy so much in the last little bit. Is it going to become the economic drag? Let's talk about it. Well, you know, something, this is a conversation we've had countless times within the RAIN community and to investors overall. We have continued to point out and shine a light on just how much uh, housing is a part of our economy. It is growing and driving GDP as high as 12 and 15 percent at its peak. So that was creating jobs and, of course, the velocity of uh, money. And it was doing all the things that it's doing. Now that those rate increases are there, housing is, in fact, slowing down. And some of that slowdown, by the way, is not just rate increases. It's, in fact, that in, there's not enough supply and all of the other things that are happening. So as that slows down, because we are a debt-driven consumer economy, as is most North American, most Western countries, the point is, is in Canada, we are debt driven, consumer driven, and housing was a big part of our GDP. As it slows down, there in fact lies the risk of the economic drag because jobs in terms of builders and construction, you know, those, those construction jobs will start to slow down as an example. And those are good paying jobs. That's really when we talk about the monetary velocity, you know, the velocity of money into an economy, when you've got construction jobs slowing down, it affects everything. So it is a ripple effect that we can start to see that economy drag down because of the uh, supply or sorry, because of housing slowdown. We got a cool chart to show here that really shows how the annual change in real residential investment. So, you know, how much money is going into that residential real estate market? And it's pretty fascinating. You could see, I mean, over the years, Patrick, from 1990 to 2020 and 2023, in fact, uh, mm -hmm. you've really seen kind of this up and down and up and down and up and down. And right now we're definitely on a down cycle where we are down. We've, we've declined now. We're approaching almost 20% decline relative to Q1 2022, which is essentially year to year on a court, like first quarter of 2023 versus first quarter of 2022. And don't forget first quarter of 2022 is when really we saw that final push into the boom market. And then you and I, at that particular time, I remember it, I'll always remember it, early March, Patrick, 2022, you and I said, the boom is over, we're heading into slump, get ready, ladies and gentlemen. Those who listened were very much ahead. I sold one of my properties at that point, which is right at the tip top of the market because I wanted to get out of it. Uh, others, Patrick, were just getting into, mar into property at that part of the market, which turned out to be not a great thing. And those people are gonna have to hang on that much longer. The point is this, cool chart, to show how this constantly is going up and down. And also we are now, uh, we're definitely off our highs uh, where, where um, uh, real estate makes up a part of GDP. And I'll show another chart on this. We've been coming down and now residential investment as a share of GDP is now down below 8%. It was above 10% for a while, the highest it had, had ever been. And let's compare that to the US, Patrick. Well, we don't, I don't like to compare Canada, all these countries, you know, we and the banks, and it seems to be a thing, you know, and I've said this before, is that we keep comparing ourselves to G7 countries. And, and one of our favorite places to compare ourselves to is the US with 10 times the population, totally geographically structured differently. I don't know why we continue to compare ourselves to anything else. Canada is Canada. And we just have to look at the world. But having said that, when we look at these numbers, and the thing that we want to point out here, JG, is that these are leading indicators, really, because the lag is going to happen. So in other words, we see this indicator showing that housing is coming off. It doesn't show up economically like tomorrow. Oh, we got this chart today, so we should expect it to tomorrow. No, it's going to come and roll out over several weeks and months that we're going to start to notice it. And that's the thing that we have to pay attention to. These are leading indicators. So then act accordingly. Yeah. The other thing is you could see how, you know, not only is the residential investment as a share of GDP, that comparison of Canada to the U.S. You can see Canada's come down. The U.S. has come down as well. But I'll put up a couple other charts where the ownership transfer costs as a percentage of nominal GDP, that has come down. Uh, new construction as a percentage of no nominal GDP, that has come down as well. Uh, and this is all kind of in the first quarter of 2023. You can see the renovation expenditures as a percentage of GDP also has come down, Patrick. Uh, mm -hmm. So all of this stuff coming down, and as you mentioned, leading indicator, this tells you where this sector is going. You won't even see the effects of this 
probably earliest you'll start to see it is the third quarter. You'll start to see it more into the fourth quarter and then to early 2022. And we don't know what that's going to look like because in between that, there's at least two or yeah, for sure two uh, other uh, rate announcements, which will have an effect. And we have to keep in mind something here, DG, is that we say it all the time, is that rate increases are an influencer, an economic influencer. They're actually... The, they're not an economic fundamental. So continue to look at the job growth or lack thereof. Look at GDP. What is it going to, uh, what's the impact on GDP going to be overall? Now we're saying that housing is going to have an effect on GDP, but it doesn't mean that we're going to all of a sudden go into this re, these recessionary numbers, although the housing market could slow down and we can start to see an uptick in unemployment. And I want to talk about that shortly too. But the point is uh, this, is that this we have to look into the future and say what will this mean to us in the future but i don't think it means because i don't think supply is uh really going to change and that is that given supply i don't think the housing market's going to crash or a bubble's going to pop whatever language people are using these days well we're going to talk about that patrick in terms of uh supply because there's been some new research come out that says supply is not a problem we're going to dig into that in just a second if you like what you learned here Go to the description below and subscribe for our free insiders newsletter where you can also stay up to date for our upcoming events and our courses. If you want to see more stuff like this, click here. If you want to see the entire show, click there.